Okay, so when I first saw this uh, Living Free Mike video here, he's talking about getting masks. Getting a mask. They're all making masks. Everybody there in his little courtside area camp there is making masks. And I'm thinking, you know what? That's very smart. You know, all these folks are, you know, they're all kind of, you know, together, hanging out. And, uh, you know, and there's the, the V is around, you know, and, uh, hey, masks are good, right? Well, well, well. A mask, like an eye mask for a masquerade ball. That's the kind of masks they were making. There's Kate, uh, uh, Southern Goodness, and some other folks there. They're making party masks, you know, like you wear to a party, you know, over your eyes. You know, it's not, it's, it's like, all right. So anyway, uh, and then of course, you know, everybody's just kind of chilling out and, uh, Hanging out in the restaurants and uh, yeah, you know, oh, just the group. Yeah, no masks, no social distancing. That's okay, you know. Hey, <laughs> I thought they're, they're wearing masks. They're getting masked up. They want to be safe. <laughs> and there's the eating the glop. All right, looks like looks like they're having a good time. Looks kind of chilly there in uh, Metropolitan Courtside and uh, kind of gets cold at night. But anyway, they uh, then of course Mike has to. He's not wearing the mask. He's wearing his. Uh, I don't know what are these. What kind of glasses would you say? Getting all dressed up for the uh, for the masquerade ball. So, all right. Ah yes, <laughs> adulthood, isn't it fun? <laughs> say nomadic living. This is the nomad life. This is the nomad life. All right. Anyway, on to something else now. All right. Uh, Dawn of Van Life. Dawn. She's parked on a city street there, and uh, somebody comes along and smashes her driver's side mirror. So uh, that kind of uh, consumes her day. She was thinking of making a video about, uh, you know, her... Um, her um, uh, the solar panels and stuff like that, but nope, she ended up uh, having to find a way to, or, you know, figure out how to get a new one of these, you know, anyway, and, uh, you know, somebody said, hey, you can call the insurance company up, but she's like, you know, you don't want to deal with insurance companies on fa fairly minor matters like that, because you know what they do, they'll jack your rates up, she's, uh, she says, and many people are, you know, worried about this, no insurance claim, you know, last, that's only a last resort. So anyway, um, so there. The fun, the fun never stops when you're living on the road, right? <laughs> oh man, a dawn of van life. Yeah, getting a little tired of this, huh? A couple days ago, she's talking about getting her van vandalized. Look at this. Somebody actually sprayed paint over her little, uh, over her little, uh, you know, moniker there on the side of her vehicle. Isn't that mean? That's just mean. Your van vandalized. That's not nice. Who do a thing like that? That's really nasty. I don't know, man. It's just, yeah. Van vandalized. That's not nice. That ain't nice. Someone from Pippi Peterson. Haven't seen her too much around lately. She uh, gives us a very heartfelt little talk here about, well, it's kind of time to uh, do something else, right? She's, she says, she says she, I mean, I took notes, excuse me. I did take notes. She says she has uh, decided to get off the road. She's, you know, get, she had a fifth wheel. She's happy that she traveled. She did a lot of cool things, but she said she's just tired of living as a nomad, okay? She wants to have a garden. She wants to get some chickens. She wants to have a yard. You know, and that's kind of hard if you're on the road all the time, right? Anyway, um, so uh, she wants to live near a big city. She wants to be near an airport so she can, you know, get in and out real quick. And she's just now finding out that it's ready. She's ready to get off the road and stay in one spot. She was also telling us how, you know, the storms, you know, she's in the Texas area. I think she's in Dallas, right? She was talking about how, you know, all these storms you get in the Midwest there in the spring and into the summer, 
tornadoes and big violent thunderstorms. It's scary living in a vehicle, you know? And when the hail comes and cracks down on top of your on vehicle and you've got your solar panels up there, it's just, it's no fun. So Pippi, and she, she actually did get off the road about a year ago, basically, and was doing some uh, house flipping stuff and some renovation work. And now she said her mind's made up, it's time. You know, I mean, it's not, she'll never not get on the road again, maybe for some trips and stuff, but the full-time RV living ain't for her. And uh, she wants to just settle down. And you know what? That's cool. You know, one of the things you can do, uh, you know, one of the things van life, RV, and she's always had a very nice RV, by the way. Let's not say she's not living in a tiny little van. She's always had a very nice RV, you know, with a lot of the luxuries. But she's decided that it's time to settle down, and she doesn't want to have to, you know, be living that uh, nomadic life all the time anymore. Ravlin K in New Zealand checks out with a, checks in with a family of five that are living in their, as they say, caravan. It's a trailer. Uh... RV Rebel Girl races a train, all right. Of course, that, that Derek guy in, uh, where is he, Indiana, Illinois, one of those, Iowa, Adam, one of those I states. He uh, finally figures out how to get his generator fixed, and that's, that's, that's good. Letters, 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 letters. I cannot understand why some people went a full-size home to pull all over the country and call it camping, writes G.B. Marie. Some will say I am jealous. I can guarantee you I am not. It just does not make sense. And so many of these people are competing with how big and how much there's costs. RVs are good, but come on, man. It gets ridiculous to call this camping. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're seeing a bunch of channels like uh, Less, Less Jet More Journey. You know, how fancy schmancy and luxurious can this mobile home be, you know? Um, seriously, um, yeah, you know, it kind of, again, you know, there are, I guess, a lot of different purposes and why you like living in a vehicle, living in a home that can be driven around, you know, but, uh, you know, some of it is just to get as simple as possible and just have what you need. Others is to take all the comforts of home and jam it into this big vehicle and drag it around with you and, you know, hope and pray it doesn't all fall apart and break. Uh, Terry B says, I never really thought of Less Chunk More Journey as a nomad channel. I don't think that's their shtick. Uh, I got interested in their channel seeing their cool Airstream that they had a few years ago. Yeah, I enjoyed that too. <clears throat> you know, they got it, they fixed it all up, they, you know, lived in it for a little while. Anyway, don't watch them that them often anymore, and I got bored, uh, but they have an excellent channel, in my opinion, for folks interested in more family-oriented traveling styles. If you could find their episodes of their, their trip through the Badlands a few years ago in their Airstream, wow, that was a wonderful journey. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, you know, every channel's different. And there's some good things with Less Junk, More Journey. And yeah, what the heck? Uh, we were talking about, yeah, today, I guess it was. We've been talking about it before. Why uh, Walmart is, you know, in many places, not allowing overnight, you know, stays in their parking lot. City Slicker Outdoor says Walmart is getting ready for the homeless surge. And they know the cities aren't taking their responsibility for dealing with the homeless problem. And or shopping centers or whatever, they're seeing more and more people in vehicles staying the night. <clears throat> and for whatever reason, whether they're, you know, dirtying up the parking lots or insurance reasons, um, yeah, they're, you know, you're out of here. Now, the thing is, too, also, our Walmarts here used to be open 24-7. So you could probably get away with parking at you know, overnight without being noticed as much since there was people in the store shopping at 3, 4, 5 in the morning. But now they're closing at 10. I think they're, they close at 10 p.m. and they open at 7 a.m. so they can do the pandemic fumigation-y stuff or whatever they do, you know, de-viral stuff overnight. So, yeah, it's probably a bit harder to, you know, get away with parking in a Walmart parking lot at 2, 3, or 4 in the morning. Bob Outdoor says a huge sense of entitlement, these Walmart freeloaders, the ones putting their camp chairs out and slides ruined it for everyone. <clears throat> That's very true. You know, somebody said that. Who, who was giving advice for parking at the Walmart? I think it was Steve Wallace. 
He says, you know, if you want to park at a Walmart or a Canadian Tire or whatever overnight, some some you know parking lot, you know, of a retail place, you know, don't yeah, don't put like <laughs> your your you know stuff out around your vehicle like you're planning to live there. You know, make it look like no one's there. You know. Yeah, and, and then move and then get up real early before, you know, the parking lot starts to fill up and get the heck out of there. P.I. Parker says the whole idea behind the concept of less junk, more journey was to spend more money on adventures and not stuff. However, the trailer that LJMJ just bought has an MSRP of about $100,000. They also purchased a new Ram Dually uh, all, with an all leather interior. <clears throat> they really like buying new expensive items, which make me, makes me think... They probably have a house or storage building that is full of J-U-N-K. <laughs> We're talking by some RVers uh, or some nomads tend to churn their vehicles frequently. I mean, C Camper Van Kenny is always constantly, you know, flipping things around, changing things or whatever. We've seen quite a few of the others. Yeah, Less Junk, More Journey. They, they're... If you watched them for four years, they've been through six different vehicles, you know. Adam says, I think the RV churning is to offset boredom. They've been doing the same thing basically for several years. This is the excitement in their lives. Why not get a house? Better question would be, why not get a jobby poo? <laughs> the two are linked. Well, I do think, I do think, uh, Less Talk More Journey, they do house flipping. I'm pretty sure of that. And they do have, they do, they're not, you know, they're not employed by somebody else, I don't think. But they do have a way of making some money and some good money probably and finally squeaky rv sales uh, uh, her, uh her take on the uh walmart overnight parking thing uh nearly all walmarts across the country would always allow overnight parking for a day or two with no problems in the past but that changed in 08 and 09 when some people in some parts of the country made walmart parking lots their permanent residence Walmart started evaluating the policy and making changes. Most Walmarts in the Northeast have no problem with an RV staying a night or two if you're passing through. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. It is the Letters, 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 and more video for the 14th of December, Monday. Have a good one. You all take care. Talk to you later. Log under.